So yeah, I've totally not run out of content ideas, which is why I'm doing a video on the Aragon series. Actually, no, I did want to talk about the Aragon books, or the Inheritance Cycle, if you will, but I didn't really know how to best do it. I didn't want to just stand in front of my bookshelf and just talk about them, because I don't think that would be the most entertaining way of talking about the Inheritance Cycle, so I thought I'd tier list the books. Uh, so, I'm gonna, there's only five books, so it's gonna be a bit weird tier listing them, but... I'm going to do it anyway. As you can see, we've got S through to D, S being absolute pinnacle of the books. Again, this is going to be relative to the books, not relative to books everywhere, but to the inheritance cycle itself. S, absolute best. D, uh, I wouldn't say don't bother reading. I would say uh, the least good of all the books, uh, or the least enjoyable, in my opinion, of the books. Let's preface this by saying the Inheritance Cycle is actually quite good. It's not too bad. It's a good fantasy book series. Is it the best fantasy series I've ever read? No. Uh, I feel like there are other better fantasy series I have read. But I enjoyed them. Uh, and yeah, dragons. Hee <laughs> hee. I like dragons. So let's get into it. We'll do it in order of book release. So Aragon, the first book. Solid B. Solid middle tier book, I'd say. I wouldn't say it is spectacular. I wouldn't say it's bad, though. I'd say it's good. It's a good place to start. You know, you're introduced to the world. You're introduced to the magic system. You're introduced to the characters. So, yeah, you know, you're kind of getting into the book. You're getting into the political intrigue of the book parts. And, you know, you're trying to understand where this is going to go as a series. But also, it is the first book. There's a lot of, I need to lay the groundwork as to what is happening in this book. So, it's a B. I think that's fine to say. Uh, I would maybe also judge by the covers. Very nice cover, too. So, it has that going for it as well. But, yeah, I would say solid B, middle of the pack. Not bad, but not amazing. But, yeah, I'd say middle of the pack. Moving on to Eldest. And now I'm trying to think what I thought of this book. I feel like... I feel like it is a C in relation to all of the books. It's a C. I don't... Th I think I found Elders to be quite slow. I know it is the portion of the book where they are... Tra or the series where they are traveling a lot. Where, you know, again, it is a lot more world building. You know, learning about the other races and how they live and what they're like. And their relationships to Aragorn and the Dragon Riders. I'm gonna stick with a C. Again, I don't think it is excellent, but I don't think it's necessarily bad. Yeah, it's not necessarily bad. I think it's a bit unfortunate that it has to go into C. Love the cover. Love red. Love red and yellow together as a combination. So good. But yeah, I think also the twist is very obvious. It's very obvious that Okay, there's going to be spoilers. It's very obvious that it's going to be Murtag, who is the dragon rider of Thorn. Uh, Thorn? Thorn? I don't know. Uh, so that was kind of obvious. But yeah, I... I Yeah, it's just a shame. Because it's not bad, but it just it takes a long time to get going. Like, the ending is good. It's intense. But it's, it takes a long time. Also, when you're first introduced to... I'm blanking on Aragorn's cousin's name, and he's really, uh, not Murtag, Roran. Uh, when you first introduced to Roran, I'm like, oh, I, don't, I, couldn't, I couldn't be bothered to put up with Roran as a character, and the split narratives, I just wanted to see what Aragorn was up to, because I thought the training aspect was good. But then as Roran's story progressed as well, he got better as a character, but I would still say uh, C out of the books. Next, we move on to Brazinga. I think Bazinga was my favourite one of these books. Points being docked for the cover being different from the other mainline Inheritance Cycle books. I don't know why they decided to do that. You could have just kept it with the dragon in the middle and the square around. I think even my copy of the book is like this, is like this as opposed to this. And I'm like, why would you diverge from what you've already done? For I digress. Let's talk about the book itself. Starts off with a bang, in my opinion. Good intrigue as to uh, setting up future plot points. Um, really good ending, interesting ending. A little bit, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it lo loses its way a, a little bit towards the end with 
the uh, new shade being made, but I think that was supposed to build Aragorn and Arya's... Uh, is it Arya? Arya's relationship? Uh, yeah, I mean, more political machinations in this book as well with Naswada. Her getting a bigger role in the book as well, I quite liked. Uh, Roran is a character that I now like. <laughs> like, I didn't like him in the second book, but the third book, I'm like, okay, yeah, he's a pretty sick character now. I quite like him, which is why I quite like it. I think it's where uh, Paolini found his footing with the writing. Aragorn felt very much like, this is my first fantasy book. Eldest moved on from that, and then Brzinga was like, where it felt like Paolini came into his own in terms of the Aragorn cycle. Inheritance cycle? I keep saying Aragorn cycle. The inheritance cycle. And, you know, more world building, but the world building felt like it made sense. Uh, the Again, the kind of the twists are a little bit... Okay, I could have seen that coming. Like, who's who Aragorn's real father is? That it's Brom? I'm like, okay, it's kind of... It was kind of obvious when they were alluding to it. I'm like, oh, okay, it's Brom, isn't it? Um, and then, but some of the other st introductory stuff to like the Eldenari was interesting, but also felt a little bit like a, not MacGuffin, because it's not actually, it's like the opposite of a MacGuffin, to be honest. But it felt like, oh, okay, you just needed a reason to like power scale more, but it did also work. It wasn't like, Oh, because the previous book also was like, why is uh, Thorn so strong already? So I guess actually, no, the Eldenari did make sense. They weren't like a MacGuffin. They weren't bad. They were just there, I think. They were there and they were a good plot device and were expanded on in Inheritance, which I'm going to put as a B as well. It's, it's good, but it's not as good as a Brazinger. I feel like... The execution of the end game of this book maybe could have been more epic. I don't know what it was. Like, there's a lot of back and forth still in this book. Like, you had to figure out the stuff with the Eldenari. You had to figure out the stuff with how do you make Aragorn strong enough to beat um, Morzan? Not Morzan. Why am I blanking in all the characters' names? To beat the king. <laughs> Oh my god, I just finished reading these books. I'm blanking on all the names. Uh, to, and to be Murtag as well. And so I'm like, Galbatorix. How do you make him struggle to be Galbatorix? And it's like, hi, you go and get the Eldenari. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But then those don't really come into play in the end game. Not so much, to be honest. The stuff with Naswada and Murtag and Galbatorix was genuinely actually quite good. It was, at points, very creepy and very, like, unnerving. So I actually quite appreciate that part of the book. I felt like that was, like, that was like a step up from the rest of the book. Like, the stuff beforehand, I think Roran gets whipped in Brzinga. That was already quite intense. But, like, the stuff with Naswada and Galbatorix was actually, like, next level. Some of the political stuff and machinations after the climax of the story, it did feel a bit like, okay, I need to tie up all these loose ends. I think in my Goodreads thing, I said this is a Lord of the Rings uh, ending, because it kind of is. It it makes sense to set up, you know, taking Aragorn out of the world, or at least not keeping him fully immersed within what is happening in Alagazia because, like, he's OP. Now, it makes sense to take him out a little bit, which we will go on to in another book we discuss. But also, it just still felt a little... It felt a little bit too convenient. But also, when you're writing fantasy, I'm not going to necessarily say that's a bad thing because it's fantasy and you can get away with stuff being a little bit convenient. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it was perfect i don't think it was as good as bazinga i think bazinga really drew me into it i think inheritance there was a lot to get done in this book like there was the actually beating galbator and the the fight with galbator i think i was expecting something super epic and it didn't come across as epic but also it did make sense 
it's hard i guess it's hard to really write something epic in a book where you've also set up this character to be so strong that basically your main character needs to find a way of using an under not underhanded but an underhanded tactic to actually beat him but nonetheless it's not a bad it's like middle it, i would if i'm doing it like this i would put it above above Eragon. And then we move on to The Fork, The Worm, and The Witch. And I'm gonna put it in D, and that's not me saying it's bad, but it it's just kind of there. It's extra, it's additional world building. It's a, and I think even Paolini says in the afterword of this book, where he actually wasn't planning on writing a another Eragon book until, unless he had like a full novel. I keep saying Eragon. Inheritance Cycle book until he had a full like novel length book to write but he kind of had the ideas come to him and then he wrote them and then his sister also wanted to write part of it uh, Angela's part so you know it it's a good it was a good taster and to be honest if I was someone who was reading the inheritance cycle as it was coming out and I got to read this in I think it was 2020 when it came out I would have been like, oh, damn, we, we we got an appetizer. We're going to be eating good soon. But I think because I read all the books books <laughs> together and then I read this, I was like, okay, well, it's not as good as a meal as the other books. But I suppose it's a nice dessert or entree or appetizer or something. I think I, I'm a bit spoiled because I got to read all the books just in one go. And then this book, additionally, I think, like I was saying, th if this was, like, your first Inheritance Cycle book in multiple years, it's like, yeah, damn, let's go. I want to read it. But that's why I'm personally putting it at D, because I've just come off these amazing books. And then the stories aren't bad. Like, it's nice to see Aragorn again. Nice to see kind of what he's going through. It's nice to see what Murtag is up to. And also get to you know no see what's up with some of the characters and then also see this world building to the history of Allegasia and also you know learn a little bit more about the the cull who are that other oh, I just read this book like three days ago who is those other guys with the horns <laughs> the name will come to me but I think I've just been spoiled where this would be a nice thing to have read when it came out if I was reading these books in the time they were coming out. But it is also nice that I get to see what some of the characters are up to because we're going to be talking about Murtag next, but we're not because this book isn't out and I don't know why it's on here. I think this comes out in October. Oh, no, don't put it in D. I can't take it out. This comes out in October of this year and... I, I it fine it'll go there I, I'm quite I was thinking of not continuing reading these after the four main books here but then I read this and then it was like okay maybe I will continue with Murtag so maybe this did do a good job maybe this is a C it's like a in between C and D maybe it did do a good enough job to make me want to read Murtag well I was like okay I see what Murtag's up to it sets up what he's going to do sets up what Angela's going to do. It tells you where Aragon is at the moment, and I think maybe they'll make a few more books, and then they'll bring Aragon back here. Also, if they're going to do a cover like this, I don't think I can talk about the Inheritance cover. I like the green. Uh, if they're going to do a cover like this, make this consistent. You know, if this is about Murtag, then the next one's about Arya, you know, her dragon behind her, Arya. If there's a new... I think I think this sets up another dragon. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's another dragon born. So, and then you do another rider here and it continues. Ah. Huh? You know what, for someone who's just read a book, I forget I read a lot of books, okay? The, and maybe also this didn't stick with me very much. Like I can recall these books far better than the one I read more recently, which might be also something else to say about the book. But again, it was like a t. It was like a little tiny short collection of short stories. So I can't be too mad about it. So that's been my review of the Inheritance Cycle. This actually was a lot longer than I thought it would be. I actually 
got more into making this video than I thought I would do. Let me know what you think of my tier list of the Inheritance Cycle books. Uh, do you believe that Bazinga is the best? I didn't put anything in S tier because I think S tier is like, even if even if this ranking is just about these books, S tier has to be like, one of these books was near perfection for me and they weren't. Uh, and so A is actually quite good. And I don't think there's too much to discern these two books. So that's why they're both going in B. Like, I could have put S, A, B, C, D, but that's also boring. Don't want to put one in each. <laughs> but, yeah, let me know what you think of my Inheritance Cycle tier list. What is your tier list for these? Uh, is there any other series like the Inheritance Cycle you want me to pick up? After I get through all of the non-fiction books I'm reading at the moment, I'm going to start on... A series that you guys actually recommended to me in a previous book book video so maybe you guys can figure out what that is by going through my older videos huh i'm gonna start on that series as soon as i'm done with a lot of the non-fiction i'm reading at the moment and hopefully i can do another one of these for that book as well so yeah comment down below your thoughts on the inheritance cycle let me know what other kind of books series you want to see me do this for I actually, this, genuinely reading these made me want to read more fantasy, and I'd made a video about that as well. So, good on Paolini for getting me into wanting to read fantasy. Maybe I'll start on sci-fi as well. Winter is my fiction book reading time, so we're fast approaching that. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you read a great book today. Mm -hmm.